Hi, I am Dominic Chanet. I am the software architect in Clario CTO office and today I will tell you a bit more about how we implemented Kafka security in the Data Service Hub. First of all, what is the Data Service Hub? It's a multi-tenant platform for the uh, creation, processing, enrichment and consumption of data streams in general. So in this description there are two main conceptual entities that need some clarification. First of all, there's the multi-tenant part. So what is a tenant? A tenant is a party, which can be either uh, one of multiple companies in a cloud-based deployment of DSH or multiple divisions of a single company in a uh, local company-based deployment of DSH that have an interest in either providing data or consuming uh, certain streams of data. And that brings us to the second uh, important conceptual entity in DSH, which is the data itself, of course, which we group in terms of data streams. So in this example, we have three tenants. They are called Cleath, Idle, and Palin. And we have two uh, streams, uh, one with parrot-related data and one with spam-related data. Now, the twist of DSH, if you will, is that contrary to most multi-tenant platforms, it's not a virtual single-tenant platform. So a typical multi-tenant platform lets multi-tenants share the same infrastructure but gives them the illusion that they are basically uh, alone in a little bubble on what is virtually a single tenant platform. That is not the case here. Uh, the case in DSH is really that those tenants can cooperate in providing data for a data stream and that uh, data provided by one tenant on a data stream can be consumed by other tenants on that same stream. So for example, here we have uh, the tenant Cleas providing data for both the parrot and the spam streams, and tenant idle providing data for the parrot stream, and tenant paling consuming all that data from both streams. Now, in this kind of setup, one thing is very important, and that's trust. Uh, both for the provider of the data that needs to trust that his data can only be used by authorized parties uh, and for the uh, consumer of the data that needs to be able to trust the provenance of the data. He needs to know where each data point comes from, uh, who provided it, and that it's definitely not spoofed in any way. So how are we going to uh, manage all this in the Data Service Hub? Um, let's take this one step closer to an actual implementation. And uh, so let's look at those data streams. So in reality, our data streams are implemented as a set of topics on the Kafka Publish Subscribe system. And a single data stream is implemented by multiple Kafka topics. Uh, more in particular, there is one Kafka topic per uh, tenant that has right access to that data stream. This allows us to easily uh, uh, maintain, guard the provenance of the data itself in the sense that anybody who consumes those data streams can easily check what the origin of a data point is by just looking at which concrete Kafka topic uh, brought me this particular uh, piece of data. And of course, we use a kind of access control list system to make sure that, for example, tenant Cleas can only write to the concrete parrot.cleas and, par and spam.cleas Kafka topics and tenant idle can only write to the parrot.idle Kafka topic and not to parrot.cleese or spam.cleese because he's tenant idle, so he can't break those boundaries. Taking this yet another step further, um, we have to acknowledge that a tenant is not just some nebulous thing, but is really represented on the platform as a set of uh, containerized applications um, that uh, are connected to the Kafka bus as either a Kafka producer or a Kafka consumer uh, to put data or extract data from the platform. Um, so the Kafka bus itself is implemented in a Kafka broker and the ACLs that we showed earlier, uh, that we talked about earlier, are really just plain old standard Kafka access control lists. Uh, so uh, in this concrete case, uh, the ACL state, for example, that the container SillyWalk or the application SillyWalk of tenant Cleese has produced rights on the uh, spam.cleese and parrot.cleese topics, whereas the lumberjack 
container in the pay-in uh, tenant has uh, consume rights on all three concrete Kafka topics that we have. So how do those containers then prove to the Kafka broker that they are indeed sillywalk.cleese or lumberjack.palin? Well, for that, we chose to use the SSL-based uh, Kafka security mechanism. So those tenants provide an SSL certificate, uh, those uh, containers provide an SSL certificate upon connection to the Kafka broker. So that leaves us with one question, how do they, do they get those certificates? And for that, we zoom in on the Sillywalk container in tenant lease. Uh, so the container starts up, it doesn't yet have a certificate. Uh, how does it get one? For that, it reaches out to a particular piece of DSH infrastructure called the DSH PKI, or public key infrastructure. It posts a request to get the certificate, but the PKI needs to somehow verify the identity of uh, the requester before it can hand out a certificate. How can it do this? Well, it has the uh, IP address that, uh, of the origin, originating TCP connection, and it uses that to uh, look up uh, the originating application in our container orchestrator, the container orchestrator being Me Mesos and Marathon in the case of DSH, uh, Marathon responds to the PKI by telling this, yeah, the application ID is Cleese slash Sillywalk. From this, uh, the PKI knows enough to generate the entire certificate, hands it back to the container, which can then actually do its connection to Kafka, which closes the circle. This brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, I hope you found this interesting, and I look forward to talking to you another time.